Okay, so the final question is, how do we take something like this and put it together with uh, the other thing that we've really thought about? So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out of this particular component. And if we back up here, we can see that this is the same, essentially, network, essentially the same network that I just built. We're going to back out of this guy, and we're going to dive into um, a little larger example. So here we can see that we're dealing with the same uh, video in, and this again can be either a pre-built piece of media or this could be a live stream of content. That's being passed over my material. The material is going to a geo. The geo is using a light to uh, illuminate it. I've got two cameras. I've got two perspectives or two projectors is another way to think about that. And this time, here's my uh, my render. My render is being passed over here through composite. And in this case, I've gone ahead and added some edge blending in here. I've also added in, uh, some masking at the bottom. And then my final step here is just an out. Um, and the reason that I have an out will be clear here in just one, one second. So I really have um, just essentially combined all of the things that we've talked about in this process already. So I've got a, um, some ramps to deal with some edge blending. In this case, I've got a ramp, I've got, uh, a ramp on either side because it's likely that, um, of course, that in this uh, projection of the ramp, we'll have to do edge blending both on both sides. Excuse me. And definitely on a couple of the projectors, We'll have to end, edge blend this top portion as well, um, and we'll, we'll just have to do a little bit of thinking about how we how we really make that work well. Um, and then my the last step here, these outs mean that when I back out of this particular uh, object, this particular container, I can send each one of um, those respective video streams to its own. Um, component, and that's here in this, our container, rather, um, component. And these allow me to uh, select which displays these are going to. So if you've got, you know, four, six, eight, however many projectors we have attached, um, we can create outs for each one of those, and then we can make sure that those are each sent to their respective projectors. Now, the strength of this particular kind of system means that the a touch center is really doing all of the, the warping for us. It's really taking care of um, breaking up all the content, figuring out where it goes, um, and we've essentially hard-coded a lot of our masking. And um, if we, for example, take this down, move it to another space, reassemble it, and uh, alignment of one of the projectors is off, is off slightly, we can dive in here, find the respective camera, um, that relates to that particular projector, and all we have to do is just make some um, changes in terms of its location. Uh, because similarly, we do the same thing, we uh, dive into our geometry viewer, we look at the location of our uh, cameras, or our projectors, and we just adjust them. The challenge in this particular um, approach is that this system probably doesn't want to do much more for us um, at least in this kind of complex way, than doing anything but the the breaking up and rendering, or the um, the kind of splitting up the pieces, the component pieces of geometry, and sending them to separate outputs, because that's really going to be a fair amount of heavy lifting. I think. So in this particular uh, approach. So D3 looks like it's, it has more options in terms of being our playback system as well as being our system for um, doing some of this similar kind of uh, projection, projection mapping methodology. Uh, working with Touch Designer, well, we could certainly build an interface to accomplish those same ends. Uh, I think ultimately we would probably be happier uh, if we dealt with something that was a little more, it was a little easier to wrangle, whether it was you know, QLab's new um, implementation, or if it was Isadora, or you, know, you name it, really. 
and then passed in a high definition signal um, or maybe even multiple HD signals and did some of our um, kind of playback programming in a different uh, environment that was a little bit easier to wrangle because I think trying to wrangle in here is just going to be not only a little bit fussy um, but could quickly kind of feel a little bit unwieldy and I think ultimately if that was the approach we would probably want to split up the responsibility of controlling playback and controlling uh, rendering between multiple machines. I think in general we probably want to think about that kind of approach um, so that we're not putting you know, all of our eggs in one basket. Another thing to think about is that we can uh, slave machines with Touch Designer. So we could, for example, build this whole network once to try and figure out where all of our projectors live and um, how all of our uh, uh, projection mapping is going to work. And then we could, say, use two computers uh, and each computer could have three outs. We could use one master uh, to be able to control and make changes to both of those other machines. So there's some other things that we can do in terms of thinking about how we leverage the strengths of this particular uh, kind of programming environment to really do um, the uh, do work in a way that's going to be very efficient. Um, if we have the opportunity to use something like D3, which would be awesome, I think it's still worth uh, doing a little bit of playing in Touch Center just so that we have a, a real, uh, a stronger sense of what it is that D3 is actually doing for us. I mean, I think one of the real values here of looking at the network and really understanding how information is being passed um, and controlled is that it, it gives you a real strong sense of what another application is really doing and where the bottlenecks are. Here in Touch Designer, one of the things that you can do on any of these uh, operators is if you uh, zoom in here, uh, find your operator, middle click and hold, I can see here in my little pop-up menu, um, Cooks is the number of times this particular uh, operator has been rendered. The cook really represents render. Here it's telling me how many milliseconds it takes to render this particular um, operator. Um, it's telling me which frame I'm on here relative to um, the number of frames I have down here in my timeline. I've got the size, I've got the format, um, I can, it tells me how much memory it's using up, how much memory all of the um, tops are using, total GPU um, being used uh, as compared to available, and then the CPU cache for everything as well. So this really gives me a way to dig in and figure out what's costing me um, uh, resources and where I might make some changes to make some, to compensate for something. All right, so I think I've said enough. I think I've given you uh, more than enough to kind of think about and wrestle with and wrangle with. Um, but that's a way, I think a better way of really thinking about what's going on in Touch Designer with respect to how we are um, approaching projection mapping with this particular kind of approach and how we're dealing with edge blending using this particular kind of approach. All right, Jeff.